A lacquerware artist whose work was influenced by Korin, or at least by the Rimpa style as practiced by Korin, was Tsuchida Soetsu, who probably made this writing box. Here a group of deer is represented in inlaid lead on a black lacquer ground. The large flat forms isolated against the plain background are typical of Rimpa-influenced lacquerware motifs. During the Edo period, an important lacquerware tradition was carried on in the Rikyuyu Islands to the south of Kyushu, which at the time were not formerly part of Japan, but had become a vassal state of the Tokugawa government as well as the Qing court in China. Lacquerware had been an important product of the Rikyuyu Islands since the 14th century. The technique of mother-of-pearl inlay is considered to have reached its height of sophistication in the work of the craftsmen there. As a vassal state, the Rikyuyu Islands were expected to pay tribute to the Tokugawa with pieces such as this tray, which dates from the 18th century. It's of a type known as yakogu, or nocturnal light shell. The image, done in carefully shaped sections of shell inlaid in black lacquer, depicts two dragons confronting each other over a pearl motif that appears frequently on Qing Dynasty imperial porcelains. Stackable food boxes, or jubako, were popular in the Edo period for use while entertaining in the home or on picnics. This four-level example dates to the 18th century and is decorated in the nashiji, or pearskin technique. Lead and mother-of-pearl have also been inlaid in some of the details. The imagery begins on the lid and extends down two sides of the boxes. It represents perfume bags, a sash, amulets, and a kimono draped over a clothing rack. The panel on the rack is decorated with a Kano school painting of a scene from the tale of Genji. In the foreground on the floor is a tamoto otoshi, or drop into sleeves, a kind of purse that was worn inside the sleeve of a kimono. Another rack is depicted on the other sides of the boxes. The imagery is influenced by a tradition in screen painting known as tagosode, which means whose sleeves. Frequently encountered in waka poetry, the term refers to the absent and presumably beautiful woman whose garments are on view. This five-level jubako was made in the 19th century in the late Edo or early Meiji period. The maker was Shibata Zeshin an innovative painter and lacquerware artist who learned lacquerware techniques at the age of 11. His teacher was Koma Kanya, a member of the Koma school which produced lacquerware for the Tokugawa shogunate. In addition to this technical training, Zeshin also studied painting the naturalistic Shijo school style. In the 1870s and 1880s, he used the complicated technique of urushi-e, or lacquer painting. This technique, first used in the Jomon period on pottery, involves mixing pigments in the lacquer. The Tamamushi shrine was partly done in Urushie. Work in this technique became especially popular in the Momoyama period, but up until the Edo period, the colors were limited to red, black, yellow, green, and light brown. By the middle of the 19th century, white was added to the palette. Zeshin lived until 1891, and in the latter part of his career, in the Meiji period, when contact was open with the West, he became celebrated internationally. He exhibited lacquerware plaques in Vienna in 1873, Philadelphia in 1876, and Paris in 1899. This jubako by Zation is painted with images of taro leaves, chrysanthemums, and small flowers. In its contrast of large forms against a flat background, it shows the influence of the Rinpa school. The jubako actually has two lids, making possible the separation of the two sets into two stacks. One lid is decorated with the same tarot leaf design as is painted on the sides of the boxes, while the other lid depicts leaves and a full moon. Both lids are signed by the artist. Related to the jubako in terms of form are personal accessories first seen in the 17th century, known as inroll. Originally used for carrying ink and personal seals, this multi-box form was held together by a cord, which was tightened and loosened by sliding an ojime, or bead. The whole was suspended from a sash, held in place by a netsuke. Inro were popular during the time of the sumptuary laws because they could easily be hidden from view when in public, and displayed as prestigious symbols during private gatherings. 
The inroll could be made in a variety of materials, but normally they were coated in lacquer. During the Edo period, inro were among the most important objects to the lacquerware industry. Metsuke and ojime were carved in stone, bone, wood, and most typically, ivory. Inro were highly personal items, and the means of decorating them varied widely. This one, signed by Koami Nagataka, has four cases and depicts a sperm whale in black takamakie, or sprinkled picture, fighting a giant octopus that's done like the background in polished gold lacquer. The fish are done in mother-of-pearl inlay. The ojime is a jade bead, and the netsuke, signed Masanao, is an octopus carved in ivory. Typically, old inro have a warm yellow patina from handling. This inro is an early piece dating to the 17th century. Its five cases together measure about 3.75 inches. The ojime and netsuke are ivory, the latter carved in the shape of a crouching dog. The gold and black lacquer images are in the Namban style, depicting three Portuguese men wearing their distinctive pantaloons and ruffled collars. This inro, about three and a quarter inches long, was made in the late 18th to early 19th century. Its decoration consists of gold and silver on black lacquer and mother-of-pearl inlay depicting a bamboo grove. The ojime is a jade bead, and the ivory inro is carved in the shape of a section of bamboo. This inro, signed Kajikawa, was made in the early 19th century. Shaped like a fisherman's creel, it consisted of three cases done in red carved lacquer on a gold and black lacquer ground. The fish represents a sea bream. The ojime is an ivory bead, and the netsuke is a fisherman's creel carved in wood. This four-case inro, only two and a half inches high, dates to the 1820s, and is signed by Koma Kyuhaku. The bone ojime is carved with the face of Dharma, the founder of Zen Buddhism, who is frequently depicted on such beads. The imagery on the inro is consistent with the subject matter of ukiyo-e woodblock prints. It depicts the shadows of courtesans and a client cast on the shoji panels of a tea house. The technique, known as togidashi, involves building up a surface of black lacquer, then covering it with gold lacquer, and finally scraping down to the gold to reveal the black beneath. Some of women's most important lacquerware accessories in the Edo period were combs, which were used in elaborate hairstyles. Japanese women first wore their hair tied up in the Nara period in imitation of Chinese and Korean fashions. During the Heian, Kamakura, and Muromachi periods, however, the hair was customarily worn long and loose. In the Momoyama period, elaborate hairstyles were revived, and consequently lavish hair ornaments were produced. In the early Edo period, these were still principally used by high-ranking women of the samurai class. By the late Edo, women on all levels of society wore their hair in a variety of combs and hairpins. This lacquerware comb, signed by Yo Yusai, was made in the early 19th century. The imagery depicts a willow and flying swallows. Hairpins, or kogai, became ostentatious by the late Edo period. This example, constructed of gold, silver, and coral, measures about six and a quarter inches. The representational elements depict an open fan, a spray of plum blossoms, and a tiny birdcage. Five ornaments are suspended from chains. This hairpin, made of gold and silver, depicts a well wheel. The suspended elements represent the well buckets. Pins like these were only part of the overall aesthetic effect of a woman's hairstyle, what the early Edo poet Ihara Saikaku called the most important element of her beauty. The arrangement of the hair itself was not merely for beauty, though. Hairstyles differed depending on age, occupation, region, social, and marital status. Courtesans most often wore their hair up in the Yoko Hyogo style, which resembles a butterfly with its wings spread. The maids in a feudal lord's household used the katahazushi style. Single women generally wore their hair in the momoware, or shimadumage styles. 
married women used the maru mage or ryowa mage. A widow's hair was usually cut short in the kirigama style to indicate mourning. These Edo period masks were made for the popular no drama. On the left is a type described as manbi, or beautiful woman. The forehead on these masks is normally smooth, high, and oval-shaped, reflecting the classic traits of courtly beauty. Masks depicting women generally do not show strong emotions, but actors could produce differing effects by tilting the head. Tilting back the head suggested happiness, and tilting it forward, darkened by shadow, it suggested grief. The mask on the right is startling in comparison. A Hanya mask, named for Hanyabo, the Muromachi period actor who introduced the type, it too represents a woman, but one distorted by jealousy and anger over the betrayal of a husband or lover. Typical of demon masks, this one has large round eye openings that are surrounded by gold. These, and the gold teeth, were designed to reflect the stage lights and create an eerie effect. This mask looks rather demonic as well, but its origin is in armor rather than drama. Originally, face masks made such as this one, of lacquered iron, were used as protection on the battlefield. By the Edo period, however, firearms had made armor less useful in combat, so pieces such as this would have been worn only during public processions. With the fall of the Tokugawa government and the beginning of the Meiji period in 1868, Samurai armor was banned, and only soldiers within the government military were allowed to bear arms. This made the Edo period the last great age of Japanese swords and armor. Because warfare had changed by the Edo period, and combat was no longer primarily between individuals, but rather between divisions of troops, it became helpful for leaders to have helmets that could be recognized from a distance. These helmets, called kawari kabuto, or spectacular helmets, very greatly in shape and representational elements. This kawari kabuto is in the shape of a sachihoko, a mythical fish, that has been raised from a single sheet of iron. The details of teeth and eyes have been added in gold foil. Sachihoko traditionally appeared as ornaments on roofs and were considered protection against fire. In the time of the warlord Oda Nobunaga, they were added to the four corners of castles as more general protective symbols. This Edo period suit of armor was made in the early 18th century and comes from the armory of Date Yoshimuro, the daimyo of Sendai. The breastplate bears the name of the maker, Myochin Monesaki, and the embossed motif on the iron plate is typical of armor made by the Mochin school. The helmet is older than the rest of the armor, dating to the 16th century. This elaborate suit of armor was made in the 17th century. It consists of iron plates covered in red lacquer that have been laced together with leather cords. This type of armor is known as tose gusoku, or modern equipment, and was introduced in the Muromachi period. The shoulder pieces and neck guard are smaller than they would have been on a suit of armor made before firearms were introduced to Japan. Although it's fairly light, the armor protects the entire body. This suit of armor was made specifically for Ii Naotaka, the lord of Hikone Castle in Omi province, whose father, Ii Naomasa, had ordered that all in the clan should wear red armor. The distinctive helmet is of a type called Zunari, or head-shaped, and is made of several iron plates that have been riveted together. The exaggeratedly tall, gold-covered wooden horns were an emblem introduced by Naomasa and worn by all of the next 13 lords of Hikone Castle. This suit of armor is also of the Tose Gusoko type. The lacquered iron plates of the cuirass are held together by silk ribbon, and the helmet is made of lacquered iron plates. It's made of a high-sided type associated with Echu province. On each side near the temples are circular gold crests with ivy motifs. The red lacquered iron face mask helped to secure the helmet, but also gave the wearer a frightening appearance. The nose guard was generally removable to make the mask more comfortable, and the chin often had a hole that served as a drain for perspiration. The red circles on the shoulder guards, skirts, and cuirass most likely represent the sun. 
the same emblem that would later be used on the Japanese national flag. These small items are sword accessories known as utatoko koromono, or things of two places. They include the kozuka, which is a hilt for a knife, and two menuki, which were attached on either side of the sword hilt to provide the bearer with a firmer grip. All three of these pieces are decorated with Neo Temple Gate Guardians. The open mouth Neo, which represents Yin, would have been on the outside when the sword was worn, and the closed mouth Yang, Neo, would have been on the handle on the inside. The Manuki were made by hammering out copper forms over pitch, then carving them and inlaying them with gold. The figure on the Kozuka, made the same way, has been attached to a ground of Shakudo, an alloy of 4% gold and 90%, 96% copper. These Futatoko Koromono are signed by Yokoya Somen, a maker who studied the Goto style of carving. He based his images on elements from Kano school paintings and is generally given the credit for having introduced the technique of oblique line engraving, which can imitate brushstrokes in metal. Elaborate sword guards, or tsuba, continue to be made up until the beginning of the Meiji period. This example is dated 1828. The metal is silver, and the colored surfaces are enamel applied in a cloisonné technique. The cloisonné technique, which was invented on Cyprus as early as the 13th century BC, had been introduced to China by the early Ming dynasty at the beginning of the 15th century. It was said to have been introduced to Japan in the 17th century, but was rarely used by Japanese craftsmen until the middle of the 19th century. The imagery on this tsuba is of snowflakes, and the phrase inscribed on the silver translates to to the order of the Lord of Daisheji. The word shinsei, meaning true manufacturer, is also included. This implies that this is the maker's highest level work. The tsuba is signed by Nakamura Shunkan, who was a metal worker in the employ of the Daiseiji Maeda clan in Kaga Prefecture. In the early Edo period, openwork designs on tsuba were generally cut out of flat sheets of iron that was usually given a black patina. By 1845, when this tsuba was made, openwork techniques had become more sophisticated. This piece is silver and depicts two horses in relief carving. The tsuba is signed by Yoshida Takechika, a master metal worker in Kyoto in the mid-19th century. Textiles are among the most fragile of art forms, especially in a damp climate, and few Japanese examples have survived from earlier periods. In contrast, many important Edo pieces still exist. This garment is an example of a jinbaori, or campaign coat would have been worn over armor to protect the warlord from the elements while in the field. Like the samurai's armor, jinbaori were personally distinctive. They were usually made from rasha, a wool cloth imported from Europe that was warmer and stronger than domestic cloth. Red rasha was a favorite. On the back of this jinbaori is a yellow wool applique that represents Mount Fuji, and its peak is a curl of smoking, indicating that it's an active volcano. The black circles at the base indicate pools of cooled lava.